If you take a bunch of talented and creative people and give them free reign to design a game, you'd be hoping for an interesting title. And that is exactly what Game Freak, the team behind Pokemon, have done, and the result is Giga Wrecker Alt. This is a quirky, futuristic Metroidvania game with some interesting physics gameplay. It was originally released in 2017, and now it's been ported over the Nintendo Switch by Rising Star Games. They've added some new features, but is the game any good? Let's jump in and take a deeper look with our review. I'm James Zimero, and this is Switch Watch. Set in the near future, Earth is in dire straits. In 2023, automaton killing machines appeared and what followed was reminiscent of every sci-fi, evil robots gone wrong storyline. Humans were slaughtered en masse over a period of three years and resistance has been squashed like a young kid's dreams of being an astronaut, only to realise in their adult life that it's just not going to happen. This humbling of the entire human race is turned into horror as the remaining survivors are ruthlessly rounded up, imprisoned and put to work as slaves or test subjects. In the opening scenes we are introduced to our protagonist Raika, a teenage Japanese schoolgirl straight out of animes that you've seen before. She is captured and fears an awful fate when a mysterious girl appears, attempts to free her and fails only to attempt to kill Raika for the good of humanity. She fails, but Reiko is left in pieces. Missing her arm, she is rescued by Dr. Kazuki, a sort of mad scientist who saves her life by infusing her with nanotechnology, turning her into a cyborg with special powers. The story follows a classic arc. We have discovery of secrets unknown, our character develops from a reluctant hero to a determined one, and more. Reiko and Kazuki have different goals, which plays out in the game's dialogue, which is well written, but a little bit dull, popping up as text on screen rather than any visual treats. Nor is there any voice acting which would had elevated the story further in my opinion. The game takes place in a Metroidvania style large map with many areas locked until you can meet the right objectives in order to progress. Often you end up backtracking and searching for things you've missed, but there is a handy teleport system to limit the amount of wasted running around. Your goal changes over the course of the game, but essentially you're trying to stop the robots and free humanity from its shackles one puzzle at a time. Once Reiki awakens as a cyborg, her powers slowly unfold. The main hook here is her ability to gather certain metallic material into a ball with which she can use to kill enemies. It's interesting that enemies can only be killed when she reaches a ball with enough mass to take them out. You know when you have reached this point as they gain a blue glow. Often you repeat the pattern of killing smaller enemies to gain enough material to take out bigger ones. The enemies themselves tend not to be the main objective. Instead, they are the material needed and obstacles in the way of your path to get across the screen. Getting across these screens is a puzzle, and this is where the physics-based gameplay comes in. You have to break walls in a certain order or weigh down a pillar in order to raise the other side by transforming your ball into weights with your ability to manipulate metal. You gain the ability to slice with this metal, which becomes essential. The general play pattern is kill some small mob, figure out how to cut a pillar so that it falls in the right direction, and you can get to the next area. Over time, the puzzles become more complex and new mechanics, such as the ability to turn this metal into a bouncy ball, temporarily are thrown in, or enemies that take more steps to kill are introduced. At the best of times, these puzzles are rewarding. In one example, you will need to kill a mob to get material jump on a platform and whilst in the air slice a pillar then quickly drop your metal as a ball to make sure it tips the right way. The pillar drops down creating a path but it drops onto buzzsaw so you need to run quickly across before it breaks down. It's intricate and can be great. The problem is like all physics based games material doesn't play nicely. Cut at a different angle and things will fall in a different direction. Break an enemy and its corpse is suddenly in the way of your bouncy ball or the material is lost frustratingly. You will often find yourself in a place where you simply cannot progress, sometimes because you've gotten it wrong, which is fair enough, but frustratingly often through no fault of your own. Simply down to the way in which materials bounce, roll and move when subject to physics rules. The developer knew this and introduced a portal at these puzzles, a place where you can reset them by turning back time slightly and giving it another go. Unfortunately, the game is its own enemy in some ways here. For example, the view zooms out a lot to let you see the whole puzzle at once. The downside is you are then tiny on the screen to the point that you can easily fall off a ledge or mistime a hit from an enemy. At other times it zooms very far in and you can mistime a jump as you don't see the other side. The controls don't help, Riker feels quite floaty, jumping is not quite right and it's very frustrating turning your metal into a block that your character kicks away or drops off a ledge or it just rolls away and this happens quite a lot. 
When you throw enemies into the mix that fight back, timing becomes a real problem. At times, the game is a creative sandbox with puzzles you can solve in multiple ways, and at others, specific solutions are required with good timing in order to progress. This is balanced well, but it's fiddly in redoing a puzzle 10, 20 times when you know the solution but can't quite get the physics to play nicely does become irritating and it happens all too often. One of the new features introduced is a little robot sidekick that serves as a helper, showing you how to solve puzzles at times if you choose to use his help. It's a welcome addition that is nicely implemented. At the end of each major area you face a boss. These require a lot of brain power and good play to beat. They are frustrating but I found them to be good fun for the most part. It's not immediately clear how to beat them and if you die enough times the doctor will begin to give you some tips. Beating them is rewarding though. As I said it does slightly step into the annoying range after a number of attempts. They look great though. As you work your way through this world you will gather material that gets you skill points that you can use in a skill tree to improve yourself. Whether it's adding more health to your health bar or extending the range of your weapon, it's a nice touch that gives you some sense of progression. The camera angle issues, slightly floaty controls and frustration of repeating the same puzzles over and over, and over again make the gameplay less fun than it could have otherwise been in this creative gameplay mashup, which is a shame. The music is well put together but I found it quite repetitive. The songs feel robotic and echo the visuals on screen which works well but there are also sections that are just too large with the same song on loop. When you consider that you repeat puzzles for quite some time having the same background track does become painful. The sound effects however are really good. Riker makes the odd noise when attacking, enemies make scary razor sharp sounds and everything fits together nicely. I would have loved to have the voice dialogue narrated at least in parts. The story is well crafted and some life in the form of voices would have been great. Perhaps just for boss battles and major scenes. With extra time since the PC release it's good to see that some of the original version's bugs have been ironed out. There are frustrating problems with gameplay but to be fair these are not performance issues it's just the nature of the game's design. The visuals are nice, the backgrounds in particular look good and give you the sense of robots taking over our planet and creating huge forges and mechanical hubs. The parallax background effects are really good here. The art design is in good taste. Everything from the character designs to the enemies and the effects look really great. Bosses in particular look epic. My main gripe is with the camera. With it zooming wildly, things can become too small to see properly and I think this makes it one of the only games where I just didn't enjoy playing it in handheld mode as a result. Coming in at £22.49 in the UK or $24.99 in the US, it just makes sense to buy this one in the US eShop if you're going to buy it at all. There is a limited run games physical edition for £39.99 as well that you might want to take a look at. Rising Star Games have done a good job of the port. There are additional levels, more languages supported, you have a handy companion and there is even an iron mode for those who want the extra challenge past the initial 12 hours or so it will take you to complete. All in all, it's not much more than it was on Steam, which seems fair in comparison for this game that's now ported to the Switch, but quite high for the game in the first place, in my humble opinion. It's not an unfair price, but there's just so much competition with so many great games that it's a tough ask. Overall, Giga Record Alt is an interesting mix of puzzler and platformer set in a really cool world with a good story and clever use of physics mechanics. Unfortunately, it is frustrating and the gameplay has issues that really do detract, leaving me in a position where the truth is I just didn't enjoy the game as much as I would have hoped for, which is a real shame. Overall, then, it's okay, but it doesn't reach its potential and it's a 6 out of 10 for me. If you like the look of this one because it's tough and you're a sucker for punishment then why not check out our top 10 tough games on the Nintendo Switch. We've got that video out right now and you can check it up there at the top right hand side. If it's your first time here and you enjoyed this video thank you very much for taking the time to watch and why not consider subscribing for more content like this delivered to your inbox. To all of our existing subscribers a massive thank you. Leave us a comment down below. Are you going to pick this one up? What do you think? Have I got it right? Have you played it on Steam? Is it any good? I'm James and and this is Switch Watch, and I hope to see you again on the next one. Take care.